All right, next step. What about the metabolism of lipids? And so lipid metabolism is gonna be based on what happens with triglycerides. So with triglyceride metabolism, the first step as we look at the triglyceride is we have the two parts, the glycerol, and then we have the three fatty acids. So the glycerol is a kind of three carbon chain molecule. So we split that glycerol off from the three fatty acids. That glycerol ends up going back and working its way into metabolism, and we'll point that out here in a minute, up at the level of the glucose and the pyruvates. The fatty acid chains, however, go through a process called beta oxidation, where essentially what happens is enzymatically we go through and process two carbons at a time in these fatty acid chains. Now the fatty acid chains could be really long, but let's just do the math for a 16 carbon fatty acid chain. So essentially we would rip off this fatty acid chain and then we're gonna take the 16 carbons and then break them apart into groups of two in order to make those two carbon acetyl-CoA's. And so if we start with 16 carbons, through beta oxidation, so 16 divided by two, we can make eight acetyl-CoA molecules. And like we said before, just kind of grab this, that one acetyl-CoA can give us 17 ATP. So eight acetyl-CoA times 17 ATPs, and we can produce upwards of 136 ATPs after beta oxidation of that one fatty acid chain except we don't just have the ability to, to um, go through beta oxidation on that one chain, we have three chains. And so we can charge up 408 ATP from that series of 16 carbon fatty acid chains. So back to our glucose chart here, as long as we're using beta oxidation, we can take those fatty acid chains, dump those in at the level of acetyl-CoA. With that glycerol, we can end up using that glycerol at a stage where we pump it in at the pyruvate level, and again, from that pyruvate 17 ATP. So comparatively, when you look at the 36 ATP from one glucose during aerobic respiration, Compare that to, so I had 17 here from the glycerol. I'm looking at like 425 ATP from one triglyceride. I mean, that those numbers are kind of incomparable. There's so much more production when we metabolize those fatty acids. Problematically, the fatty acids are hard to attack enzymatically because the enzymes are water soluble. The lipids kind of create a barrier against that. And the enzymes that break them down aren't released readily.